Yes, uh, said she's not coming, so we can go ahead and start then. Good morning. It is good to see you. It's good to be here. I'm glad that the weather's a little warmer than last week. And the wind ain't blowing. Yes. I thought our roof was going to fly off yesterday. It was. <laughs> it was. Oh. But uh, thankful to be here, and I'm thankful that everyone's doing okay. And let's go ahead and open up in a word of prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this day. We thank you for your love, and we thank you for the sun that is shining. Thank you for the opportunity to be in your house and to fellowship and to uh, sing praises. And to, Father, we just thank you for this time that we can spend with you. And we ask your blessings on it. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, if you don't mind, we're just going to kind of bypass the singing part. My voice is just not in the best of moods this morning, and usually Julie's the one that's leading it anyway, so... We can sing in our hearts. How's that sound? So, <laughs> but uh, do we have any praise or prayer requests? Why don't we just, uh, go ahead and uh, go before in prayer with these requests as well? Gracious Heavenly Father, we do again come before you. We thank you for this time and lift that we're here. Father, we do lift these requests before you. Father, our continuation in James chapter two as we as we conclude in the chapter two and get ready to look into chapter three. We just Ask your blessings in this time as we look in part two of, of faith and works. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, if you would, please open your Bibles to uh, James chapter 2. We'll, we'll be finishing off the uh, last half of this uh, section of uh, faith and works. And then next week, well actually next week we'll probably be doing a uh, uh, good was it uh, Good Friday, uh, you know, uh, Palm Sunday? <laughs> Dang, I'm sorry. My, my brain's just not fully functioning right now. But, yeah, we'll, we're get, gearing up for Easter and the Resurrection Sunday messages. And then uh, we'll continue with uh, James chapter 3 a- after that. And uh, so we're almost halfway down through the book of James now. James chapter 2. And this is still the chapter of uh, verses 14 through 26, but we're going to pick up in verse 18 here. James chapter 2 and verse 18. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. Thou believest thou that there is one God, thou dost well. The devils also believe and tremble. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? What or Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offended, offered Isaac his son to the altar? Seest thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect? And the scripture was fulfilled which saith, Abraham believed, believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. You see then how that by works a man is justified, and not by faith only. Likewise also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works, when she had received the messengers and had sent them out their way. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead. Just to kind of recap a little bit of what we saw last week, um, we talked, uh, the first point was faith, and it had the question, does faith save? We saw in Ephesians 2, 8, and 9 that uh, for by grace we are saved through faith, not works, and even that faith itself is a gift that we receive from God. We have faith as a gift from God so that we can believe and receive his precious gift of salvation. Uh, the second point was the meaning of the word or of faith. And faith is just believing what God says he will do. Faith means uh, belief. It's persuasion, assurance. Uh, we see that in the strong definition, it means to convince, to persuade. And what is faith? Uh, there's a list in your uh, 
booklet that were it was in there last week as well. A lot of things about faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Hebrews 11:1. 1. Uh, what is your faith in? Is it in the work in Christ and His works, or is it in the works of others, including our own works? Uh, are we trusting in what we do to get to heaven, or are we trusting what Christ did to get to heaven? Obviously, we can't work our way to heaven. Ephesians 2:8-9. But there are works involved in the sense that Christ did the work for us, and we must believe and trust in Him and His work on the cross. Um, point two there is where we pick up with the works uh, that we kind of finished off last week. The definition means to toil. Uh, it's an act. And we asked, is faith alive or dead? As previously shared, our re works reveal to the world what our, how our faith is and how important our faith is to us. And that's kind of where we left off. Uh, we pick up in verse 18 here now um, with works. Again, it says, Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show you my faith with my works. Thou believest that there is one God, thou dost well. The devil also believe, devils also believe and tremble, but wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? The you know, question I have here is, have you ever met someone who said that they were saved, that they knew the Lord, that they were uh, a Christian, that they were going to go to heaven, but their life just didn't quite reveal uh, the fruit, you know, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, and so on. We, we see that in scriptures. And, you know, the Bible tells us that, that basically that we will be known by the way that we act, by our love. And you ever meet someone that, that says they're a Christian, but yet their life doesn't quite reflect that? Uh, I believe this part's in your booklet as well it comes from the gospel location org it says do you know anyone who would readily say I believe in God but has no other indicator of Christ or Christian faith how might you respond to that person James chapter 2 14 through 26 which is what we're going through offers them some chilling words in James 2 verse 19 he says you believe that God is one, you do well. Even the de demons believe and shudder. In this passage, James is talking to believers about someone who claims to have faith, most likely a person in their congregation. This person is a professing believer. And the big question that James wants them to ask themselves is, is my faith real? Now the article goes on further. And if you want, again, that's on the, the gospellocation.org. Um, I'm not going to read the whole article, and you can see part of it up here. But uh, the question that James asks is, is, is my faith real? Do others know who I am? Is my faith evident in, in the way that I walk, in the way that I act? So there really are two main options in the way we can interpret this passage. The first option is that faith is not enough, but that we need faith plus works in order to be saved. And the second option is that faith is enough, but that genuine faith is proved by its good works. So let me give you three reasons why I think we can have confidence that that second option of interpretation is the correct one. First is in regards to the audience. At the beginning of chapter 2, verse 1, James writes, My brothers, show no partiality as you hold the faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory. He identifies his audience as Christians. Therefore, we shouldn't think that what we're going to find in the next couple passages is that he's giving instructions on how a person can be saved, but rather instructions to a Christian who already has been saved. In James chapter 1, verse 17, it says, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights. 
This passage shows us that good things find their origin in God. So for the interpretation to be true that says we need to appeal to ourselves for good works plus faith to equal salvation, rejects the idea that all of the good that we need finds its origin first in God rather than in man. This is even said more clearly in verse 18, of his own will he brought us forth by the word of truth. In other words, it's not merely the will of man that conjures up the good deeds plus the faith necessary in order to be saved, but all of these things come from God. The third reason is that the Christian interpretation, that second option, agrees with the entire rest of the teaching of the New Testament. I want you to consider Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. It says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, so that no man can boast. Look back here also at Romans chapter 4, verse 5. And to the one who does not work, but believes in him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is counted as righteousness. I think about the Philippian jailer who had Paul and Silas in his care. Paul and Silas answered his profound question and simple. He said, what must I do to be saved? Their answer, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. Titus 3, 5 says it again in a different way. He saved us not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy. Jesus even says something very similar in John chapter 6, verses 28 and 29. He was approached by a group of people wanting to know the list of works they must accomplish in order to be saved. And one man said it clearly, what must we do to be doing the works of God? And Jesus answered him, this is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. These three reasons show us that the New Testament is explicit in its teaching that the only way we can be saved is through faith alone, not our deeds. The Christian view then agrees with the rest of scripture from beginning to end. So this is what I believe James chapter two is trying to teach us. So also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. This verse is here to challenge Christians to right living because they've already been saved, to live out their faith because they have that faith. In fact, in verse 18, he says, Someone will say, You have faith and I have works. Show me your faith apart from your works, and I will show you my faith by my works. He compares false faith, your faith that does not have works, and true faith, my faith that does have works. And he's warning people from having a superficial profession of faith, which is not the same as true and genuine saving faith. He was pointing out there, there's three points that he had about James that, uh, that we aren't saved by works, but that our works, again, reveal uh, our, our faith, uh, that we are known you know, the, the evidence is there because of our works. Um, when I first, when our, my family and I first moved to Kentucky a little over 10 years ago, I worked for a company called CSC. It was out in Barberville, Kentucky. It was a call center. Uh, it was contracted by the Department of Labor. And the main tool that I used while I was there was called the phone. I, I'll be the first to admit I really don't like the phone. I could, I could do without it. I, I, I like being able to communicate with the family and, and in emergencies, but beyond that, I, I really don't like the phone. I, I, in many ways, wish it was never invented. Um, and, and here's a person that doesn't like the phone that's using the phone for a job. Basically, what I was trying to do was make ends meet so that uh, I could provide for the family and so I was doing a job that even though I didn't like it, it was for the greater cause. But while I was there, I, I would still try and do above and beyond what, what they expected me to do. I, I worked as hard as I could, did as best as I could. And within six months, they uh, elevated me from not just the phones, but the emailing. And I do better with the email because it's not as... Uh, interacting with people um, over the phone, especially with the Department of Labor, I would get people that would cuss up one ear and down the other ear and, and you know, you're there to help them, but, but, uh, but they're angry at you. Email wasn't quite as bad like that. 
and the root the reason why that they put me up to, on the email is because they could see by my words my efforts of what I was trying to do and how I was trying to be the best I could at, at work and uh, normally somebody doesn't get to do the emails until they've been there for at least a year preferably 18 months or more but they can see by my works the, the evidence of my character and my nature and we are known to the world by our character by our actions uh, even as a as a Christian um, you know, somebody comes up to you and say, "You just seem different." You know, you feel you know, you feel different in this room. It's just they they can tell that you're you're a Christian, and it's and it's by the, by your fruit, by your works. Scriptures reminds us that as children of God, we are known by our fruit. Another way of stating that is that we are known by our work. Uh, works is not what. Um, uh, Works is not really what got me the better job position. It's the evidence of the type of person and character and quality within me that really got the job. The works was just a way of showing that quality or the type of person that I was. And works in the scriptures here. It does not save a person, but it reveals the faith that one has within us. In verses 18 through 26, faith is evident by the actions that we do it's evident people see what we do and and as a result it's by the work that is accomplished that people know who we are faith on its own is not seen or understood by others unless the works reveal the faith that we hold if we were to say that I'm trusting the Lord to meet my needs then go around all the time showing signs of worry anxiety fear because well, I'm just not sure I'm going to be able to get the groceries this time. Or Then my so-called faith in trusting the Lord to meet my needs is not really evident there. But when I remain calm and I wait for the Lord to provide an unexpected check or a gift of groceries from a friend or however he decides to provide, then the calm and patient attitude helps to reveal my faith through the works that I am or even am not doing. James gives us better examples in verses 21 through 26, and we'll look at that in just a moment. But works brings out the evidence to those around us, the truth to what we truly believe in, what we stand for. We need to live a life displaying our faith and trust in Jesus Christ. We need to show others through our works, through our deeds, through our actions, through everything that we are, that our faith is real and that we love the Lord. By allowing His love to flow in us and through us. Verse 19, salvation does not come from just believing in God. From just believing in God. I'm not sure if I put that in your workbook. If not, I apologize. But salvation does not come from just believing in God. It even tells us that uh, the devils, the demons, the evil spirits, those who are opposed God, they believe in God and they tremble. And they do so because they know the power of God. They know how holy he is, that God created all things. But that belief alone does not save them or change them in any way. Salvation comes through one source, and that's through Jesus Christ. Repenting of your sins, believing that Jesus is the way to the Father, confessing Jesus as Lord receiving the gift of eternal life, everlasting life, through Jesus Christ, through his salvation. Salvation does not come by works, not by works of righteousness, which we have done. We see that in Titus 3.5. But by the works that Jesus Christ did to save the human race. Um, in your book, I believe, in your worksheet there, there's a, a number of verses that's also up here on the screen. This is how we receive salvation. But as many as received him, we received the gift of salvation. To them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Receiving, believing. John 9, 38 says, And he said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. There's a evidence there that of belief because he started worshipping. And they said in Acts 16.31, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, 
and thy house. Romans 10, 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth, so we see receiving, believing, worshiping, confessing, confessing with your mouth that Jesus is the Lord. And it goes on to say, thou shalt and, that, and shalt believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Again, the devils believe in Jesus, but we need to believe that not only is Jesus truly the Son of God, but that God raised him from the dead. That shows us that God accepted his work, his, his actions for our salvation. Ephesians 2, 8, 9, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest ye so again, we see works involved in salvation, but it's not our works. It's the works of Jesus Christ. Our works is just an evidence of the faith that's already there. Titus 3, 5, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, to God's mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. And there's many other verses in scriptures that talk about salvation Jesus Christ said in John 14, 6, that he is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through him. He is the only way to heaven. We see these verses that salvation comes through faith, receiving what Christ has already done, what he's accomplished, believing on the Lord, confessing Jesus as our Savior. Again, not by our works, but through the works of Jesus Christ by going to the cross, taking on the sins of the world, by dying for us, but by being buried, by raising again the third day. He paid for the wages of sin, and he paid in full. Whenever he was on the cross, he said, it is finished. That is a Greek word meaning to telestai. And to telestai means paid in full. Christ paid in full the wages of sin. Romans 6.23 tells us that the wages of sin is death. Christ did that. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The works that James speaks of, it's not works that leads unto salvation, as we saw in that video, but it's an evidence of the salvation that has already occurred within us. Verse 21 goes on to tell us, Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Seest thou how faith wrought with his works? And by works was faith made perfect. And the scripture was fulfilled, which said, saith, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. And as we remember the story of Abraham back in, in the, the Old Testament there, uh, here's this elderly man, and he's married to a wife who's beyond childbearing years, and yet God promises them a child. Well, they took it on their own, and uh, I believe uh, the handmaid Hannah, I think was her name, and they had um, another child who is actually, as of today, uh, enemies with the children of Israel. Uh, but, they, but, they, but they come from Abraham, too, and, and, and they fight over the Temple Mount, they claim that they have the right to uh, Israel because they were up from the firstborn, but they weren't from the chosen that God had promised through, uh, Sarah, uh, through, through Abraham's wife there. But Isaac was born. And when he was old enough to travel with his father, they journeyed to the mountaintop where Abraham was going to sacrifice his only promised son. God promised him a son, promised a heritage of thousands upon thousands upon thousands, and even more descendants that would be numbered like the stars of the sky. And Abraham knew that if Isaac were to die, his descendants through the promised seed would disappear. But Abraham also knew that God was a God of uh, faithful promises that he would keep that which he spoke to Abraham and by faith Abraham offered up his son Isaac as the Lord had asked him to and just at the right moment as he's raising up his sword to, to kill his son to sacrifice him intervention comes an angel comes and says look over here in, in the bushes there's an animal for you to sacrifice 
God saw by the works of Abraham his faith. Abraham was ready to kill his son because he had faith in God and he was going to be obedient. And it's not the works that saved him, but Abraham's faith in God. The works were a result or a form of evidence of his faith as verse 24 continues, and we'll see that in just a moment. James is one of those books that can often confuse Christians who read it for the first time because in some ways it sounds like James is contradicting what Paul says when Paul says that that, uh, uh, salvation is not by works but by faith alone. I don't think James is contradicting Paul at all though. Uh, I think James and Paul are exactly on the same page. I simply think that what James is doing is talking about what happens in the Christian life after justification by faith alone. And what James is saying over and over again in the book with his commands, with his, uh, with his theological explanation in chapter 2, he's saying that faith, if it's real, if it's genuine, if it's actually relying on Christ, will produce fruit. So even if you look at uh, uh, carefully the argument James makes in James chapter 2, he actually accepts everything that Paul says when he quotes from Genesis chapter 15 verse 6 that Abraham was justified by faith. Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. James agrees with that. Uh, He affirms it. He just says, now, watch what happens in Abraham's life after his faith is credited to him as righteousness. That faith then produces fruit. So he says there in that uh, that chapter that that verse is fulfilled uh, when Abraham offers Isaac as a sacrifice. What he means by that is just that that verse, uh, Abraham's faith was credited as righteousness, reaches its intended conclusion. In other words, his faith grows to maturity and finds its maturity in obedience. He's not at all denying that uh, that faith is what saved Abraham, that faith is what was credited as righteousness. He's just saying that was a genuine faith and it issued in obedience. And so the whole point of his book over and over again is, listen, you Christians, you're not supposed to have a faith that is dead. You're not supposed to be hearers of the word only. If your faith is genuine, if it's real, then just like Abraham's faith that saved him, your faith is going to issue in a life lived in obedience to God. Verse 24 says, You see then how that by works a man is justified, and not by faith only. Likewise also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works when she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way. For as a body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Just like our body, as explained here, is dead or is without life if the spirit is not residing within it. Our faith is is very similar uh, without works. Faith is the substance that motivates our works to do what we do, or even in some cases, what we don't do. So the the ideal of James chapter 2 and the book of James is that we are to work out our faith by showing evidence of our faith through the works that we do. And those works don't lead us to salvation, but reveals to the world what's already been accomplished within us through the works of Jesus Christ, that our faith is genuine, that it's real, that it's sincere. Let's close in a word of prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, as we come before you, again, we thank you for the day that you've given us. As we've been looking through the book of James and how our faith can be strengthened as uh, we draw closer to you, Father. Father, I just pray that you just help us to... uh, not just say that we are Christians, but help us to continue to to reveal to the world that we are Christians by the works that we do, which is evidence of the fruit of our faith. Again, Father, as I even mentioned in the past, I thank you for this church, for the people in it, and, and that they do accomplish this, that they do reveal through their works their love for you as they, as they care for the community, as they, as they care for the homeless and for those that are in need of shelter and food and so forth, Father. 
and even uh, for family and friends that are nearby that they care for, Father, it's, it's just evident that this church is a church that loves you and wants to, to show that with the world. Father, I pray that we continue to show that in our lives and that uh, we continue to draw closer to you. Uh, I just lift our Heavenly Family before you and I, and I ask for safety upon them this day and throughout the rest of this week. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.